Hi, this is Alana Hefner and I'm the Director of Career Services at Tarleton State University. And I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about digital dirt and your professional image online. First of all, we have to get to what is the definition of digital dirt. It is unflattering information about you drifting around on the internet. It's pictures you take, it's pictures other people take, the language you use, the affiliations that you're associated with, and the pastime activities that you take part in. How does it get online? Well, obviously, everybody has a smartphone. Probably everybody listening to this recording has a smartphone. And either may be listening to it on a phone or through your desktop. Nonetheless, we can access social media instantaneously through our smartphones and through our desktops. So it's not only about things that you post about yourself, but it's things that other people post about you. Sometimes you know about it and sometimes you don't. Why does it matter? I'm sure many of you can figure out why it matters, but we're going to go through the process anyway. First impressions are important, whether it's online or in person. With an online, you're wanting to build trust and communicate to the world that you are a professional. So not just the world, but future employers. And the best way to do that is to have a neutral or a positive social media presence. If you look like the gentleman on the right and on, on social media, yet you're trying to apply for a position on the left, there's a little bit of a difference in, trust me, I'm a doctor kind of feel. All about first impressions, you're going to want to make sure that you are living up to the standard in the interview of saying that I have all these qualifications, I can represent myself and you, the company, out in public, and then have the same type of social media set up so that the, the two are congruent. Fortunately or unfortunately, many first impressions are made by social media or online and not from the first handshake. With that being in mind, you have to take into consideration everything that you post from your phones and from the computers. What are you putting out on social media? What is the story that you are writing? First impressions are very heavily weighted no matter what industry that you go into. And negative information out on the internet always weighs more heavily than positive. In fact, it takes five pieces of good, awesome information to overcome one piece of negative or doubtful information. For instance, if you were to look at my name and you found pictures of me doing keg stands or in bikinis or doing other things that are less than professional, it might make you question my validity, my professionalism. What right does she have to talk about these types of things? It's the same thing with you as a candidate. Employers want to see that you are professional throughout and not just in the interview process. So it would take several pieces of me doing volunteer work, me operating and having some fun with my kids, doing very focused and professional and family oriented things to overcome one piece of small small negative information. So keep that in mind as you're taking your next picture for Instagram. Just some facts and some stats. I'm going to go through some numbers throughout this presentation. Not only is it employers, but there's also admissions officers that are looking and many times that can have an, imp an implication for your application. Some people may use it and some schools may use it to determine whether you get into their school or you don't get into their school. There is always a bright side to social media, of course. A lot of hiring managers say that they found information on the profiles to be professional and basically back up the great information that you're putting on your resume in, in an interview, such as great communication skills or has a professional demeanor and professional profile and all the things that are posted in social media are actually aligned with the kind of impression that they're getting in the interview. So kudos. However, Again, with smartphones, we have the ability to document everything in our life, and some of you do that, right from eating a bowl of Cheerios to going out and checking in at Chili's, whatever the case may be. Here's a stat for you, and back in 2015, of the 142 violations that were documented in 2015 at Tarleton State, 109 were occurred in the residential facility. 
And unfortunately, many of those were stumbled upon because of social media. There was a backlog of documentation of, oh, so-and-so did do X, Y, and Z, and here it is. It's blasted on social media. More examples of questionable things on social media. Beer pong. Drunk softball. There's all sorts of things that are going on that seem fun to college students. And I'll just pause right here. This is not a presentation or a lecture on don't drink, don't do drugs, don't partake in those quote unquote fun college activities. That is a whole nother presentation and for a completely different time. This is social media. This is digital dirt. We just want to create awareness of if you're going to do activities like this perhaps don't document it in social media. Our first and foremost with career services is that we work with employers and employers do not want to see references to illegal drug use or sexual harassment or anything sexual in nature profanity and all the things listed here guns um, anything of with ethnicity or sexuality. It's not professional to, to talk about those things. Now, as we move forward, some of the profile pictures and the albums and the status updates and tweets and Instagrams may not be um, pleasing to the eye and they may even be offensive. So please note that none of these are Tarleton students and if they are they were grabbed from a website that had already published these photos and they do not and, and career services does not own them so imagine for a moment that you're the hiring manager or a boss and you've been granted a hundred thousand dollars to start up your company what pictures and status posts would you find risky for your business if you have applicants Remembering that perception is reality. This guy, Chad. Oh, Chad from Bachelorette. Don't be a Chad. Be more like Ben Higgins. Ben Higgins and Chad both were on the, the Bachelor or the Bachelorette. However, one is clearly more professional than the other even though some people may say that Chad's profile is nothing short of incredible. Again, this is not a presentation on don't have fun. Looks like a lot of people are having fun in these photos. We're just saying perhaps don't document and share with the world. Other samples of university events, maybe not university sponsored events, but events that take place around a university. 12,000 students at this one. And then of course there's lovely LJT in Stephenville, Texas. Again, disclaimer, if there are Tarleton students in these photos, they were not, we did not poach them from Tarleton students profiles. These are actually on the LJT website. And then, gosh, lots of love here. These guys probably had a really bad night. And no, they're not always glamorous photos either. Some of these, especially on Halloween, can be very tricky. What seems funny and a, and a good idea at the moment may leave a legacy that promotes a different image, perhaps. A few more facts about Facebook. Now we, we go on and on about Facebook because it has the most breadth and depth and it's been around for quite some time. However, you can get just as much in just as much trouble on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and all those other great social media outlets. However, Facebook has the most information at our fingertips. You can read here, just like everybody else, all of the different ways that people interact and how often they interact with Facebook. Interesting was 83 million fake profiles are out there. Thursdays and Fridays are the highest usage for engagement for Facebook. 50% of 18 to 24 year olds go on Facebook when they first wake up in the morning. That's right, 18 to 24 year olds still get on Facebook. Some posts to think about. 
the one keeping it tight baby this was a granddaughter was saying grandpa another reason why you should be careful on what you post is that you never know who's going to be reading it and this young lad down below had a professor that he had friended and was making a comment about their class and clearly got caught poor guy Another disclaimer is that, personally, these things are funny. Uh, any, probably those of you watching this or reading this or listening to this can see that it is, these are funny things. So this is not a buzzkill. This is not a, you get it, buzzkill. This is also not a presentation on don't have fun. Am I saying that beer is having fun? No, but what I'm saying is, do what you would like to do. However, be careful on how you post it. Some things are just better passed around on the phone and not retweeted. Let's watch a little video captured on a social media account. Mardi Gras 2015. Come on, take it down. Now, while I may have chuckled, again, something we may pass around, clearly these kids are not drinking alcohol, but something I might pass around of, hey, isn't this funny, I clearly would not repost this because of the perception that I would be encouraging underage drinking. Clearly, way underage. So, it's not just profanity, it's not just alcoholic pictures that could leave a bad impression. This one's pretty funny, even though there is profanity in it. Yes. This one's just wrong on so many accounts. Again, it's not about, not necessarily that you created this meme, but did you retweet it? Did you like it? Did you go and support it? And this one's just bad, again, for all sorts of reasons. I hope he had a really good 2017, to be completely honest with you. All right, so if you're thinking, well, Miss Hefner, what do I do if I have some things out there that I'm not real proud of? We have a couple of options to look at. You can leave the internet, which is highly unlikely and not advisable in this day and age, or you could actively manage your online reputation. We've already discussed who all it could be searching, but let's talk a little bit more about who could be. If you're considering being a part of a Greek organization or a leadership organization on campus, an honor society, you may take this presentation into consideration. Scholarship entities, not all of them do screenings or social media, but some probably do. Employers, I think we've beat that one over the head. Faculty and staff, what do we mean? Well. For instance, like the young lad who had posted that he was in somebody's class, for instance, if you have a test and you are absent that day and then you ask to take the test at a different time and date to, to make it up and the faculty member scopes your social media out and sees that you had been at a party the night before and basically were hung over the morning of the test, they may decide, mm, you know what, you get the grade that you get. Those are all reasons, and, and there are others, why you should really consider what you post. Ellen. Ellen is a good example of social media prowling. Last week I mentioned that it was Facebook's 10th anniversary, and I wanted to celebrate it, so I thought what I would do is I'd start off the week by going through all of your Facebook pages that you have. Uh, you posted them, and um, so I want to share some uh, with the world right now, if that's okay. If, It doesn't even matter because I'm doing it anyway, but I'm glad you're saying you're excited about it. Uh, Joseph Ramirez and Michelle Aquino and Daniel Del uh, Corneo. Corneo? Corneo? Hi. You can stand up if you like. Hi. How are y'all doing? Good. Okay. Yeah? Okay. What do you think I'm going to show? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> Which one is Joseph? Joseph? Joseph, uh, this is a picture that you posted with your two friends. Let's take a look. Yeah. And, 
Is that you up there? You're on top. I'm assuming you're on top. What? Why? 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 You're really bored. You're bored? Yeah. We all do that when we're bored. We come from a small town. I, I like it. I, it's, it's very nice. Thank you. Yeah. What do you have to do with it? You're standing up. Did you have something to do with it? Me? Yeah. I'm the person in the picture. Oh, that's you. <laughs> Joseph took the picture the and posted yeah, it. The top is me. Yeah, well, and we know that. Face. And you're saying, like, my eyes are down here, everybody. <laughs> All right. Have a seat. Thanks for sharing that with us. Here's Louis Lucas. Where are you? Luis or Louis? Louis. Um, Louis. Do you know what I'm going to show? No, I'm scared. The audience. <laughs> no, you should be proud. the whole package. <laughs> All right, so there's there's some large, large margarita glasses. There's a shot glass that's, that you just keep around your neck that it, it's on a, I've never seen that before, but you remain, you hold on to your dignity with that hat. You say, well, what was going on there? Um, it was for a calendar, actually, and I was Mr. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Congratulations! That's Louis Vienne right there. Uh, I'm going to give you some Ellen underwear so you can pose in some Ellen underwear next time. <laughs> Carol, Carol Rock and Casey Christensen, where are you? Hi. How y'all doing? Good. Fantastic. Okay, how do y'all know each other? Oh, uh, she's my daughter. Okay, all right. Okay, so you uh, posted a picture that I would like to see. Uh -oh. um, let's see it. <laughs> okay, I have an explanation, a really good one. Um, I'm trying to figure out if the actual guilty part, yes, the one in the, the back corner. Uh-huh, back here? He, yeah, it was a normal barbecue until he walked in and yes. said, you know, a garden hose and a bottle of dish soap, and I'm just saying. And the rest is history. I want you to feel very, very comfortable. And uh, so I have this set up for you over here, if you'd oh like to move. today you're going to get an iPad mini. That's what you get for that. And now we shall dance. Ellen, she always has some good ones. So basically what you need to do is decide the reason you're sharing the information that you post. How much information is too much information? Cleaning up your presence, again, you can do that by going back and deleting status posts and pictures, untagging yourselves from other inappropriate content. Use your privacy settings. Your privacy settings are only as strong as your weakest link in your privacy settings. And what I mean is, of all the people that you are connected with, you are at mercy to their privacy settings. So if we are friends, you and I are friends, and I have my privacy settings set to the highest standards, and you are a slacker, and you haven't looked at your privacy settings in a while, and yours defaults to public for everything, then other people can get to my profile and my information through your privacy settings, meaning you're the weakest leak in my friends in my bank of connections. So always look at your privacy settings and dictate who and how and when people can look at it. 
create positive and neutral content. Again, just because you have a smartphone with you and you're having a really good time at one of those parties that we're not telling you not to go to, doesn't mean that you need to upload it. You can also set Google Alerts, so Google can alert you anytime somebody tags you in, in postings or in information on the internet. You can also try to claim your own domain. Again, to move things higher in the search engine when an employer or other people are searching for you and content posting it posted about you on the internet. Thank you so much for listening. If you have further questions about how to clean up your digital dirt, please contact Career Services on the Waco, Stephenville, Fort Worth, or Mid-Lothian campuses.